Please rise for the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exalt and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess oh, I to God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have declared you sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. <clears throat> The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to offer the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearances or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. <clears throat> not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. I will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesus, or Jesse, sent and had the young man brought to him. And he was ruddy, youthful, and handsome to behold making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for he is the one. 
Then Samuel with the horn of oil in hand anointed David in the presence of his brothers. From that day on, the Spirit of the Lord ruled upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In burdened pastures, he gives me refuge, repose. Beside the restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the valley of dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are with my side, with your rod and your courage, that give me courage. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Our reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless workers of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you. Pharisees, 
Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. As human beings, one of our fundamental drives is the protection and preservation of life. We all long for safety and security. We like to believe that we know what to expect as our day and our lives unfold. So many of us do all we can to maintain a level of order in our lives. And that is one of the things that is so unsettling about the time we find ourselves living in. We realize that so much of our daily lives is changing by the hour. And so much of what is being asked of us is outside our control. Daily, decisions are being imposed on us by our government officials and our church leaders, and we did not get a say. And we like to have our say. We are used to having our say. I recall how just nine or ten days ago, when I learned that the St. Patrick's Day parades were canceled in Chicago and Naperville, and I thought, that seems to me to be an overreaction. I no longer think that way. But in the moment, I did not see what others were seeing. I did not understand what our government officials, our global medical community, our church leaders, what they were seeing and what they were understanding. I was blind to the ramifications of the spread of the coronavirus and how that can overwhelm our medical community and put at risk and harm the most vulnerable among us. In our first reading from the book of Samuel today, God asked Samuel to choose and anoint the king from among the sons of Jesse. God tells him, do not judge from his appearance, and not as man sees, as God sees. <coughs> Naturally, Jesse presents his seven oldest sons to Samuel first. That makes perfect sense. Surely, Samuel would want to choose from among one of them. And yet Samuel realizes, or should we say sees, that the future king is not among them. Samuel asks Jesse if there are any other sons, and Jesse then calls his youngest son, David, who is tending the sheep. And God tells Samuel that he is to anoint David, that David is the one. In a certain sense, God allows Samuel to see in David what he himself sees. Earlier this week, I think providentially, on Monday we read from the second book of Kings of David Mass. And we heard the story of Naaman, the army commander, the king of Aram. And as valiant as Naaman was, Naaman was a leper. And word gets to Naaman that he should present himself to a prophet in Samaria. And so the king of Aram sends him to the king of Israel with 
silver talents and gold pieces and festal garments in hand. And Naaman felt that he knew exactly how things should work with God. When the king of Israel reads the letter, he tears his garments and exclaims, Am I a God with power over life and death? When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he gets word to the king, Let Naaman come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. And so Naaman comes to Elisha's house, and the prophet sends him a message to go to the Jordan rivers and to plunge himself into it seven times. In the Jordan, your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman, he goes away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there and invoke the Lord and move his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. And are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Farfar better than all the waters of Israel? Naaman turned about and left in anger. He was wanting to control how God worked, or at least how he thought God should work. But his servants, they, they reasoned with him. And in the end, Naaman surrenders. He surrenders control of the situation. And he goes down to the Jordan River. He plunges in seven times at the word of the man of God. And he becomes clean. A big part of our living the life in God involves allowing God to draw us from darkness into light. And so we invite our loving and merciful God to shine his light to every corner of our lives in the midst of this pandemic, that God's light may inform our medical community and our first responders, that God's light may inform our government leaders and our church leadership. I know that each and every one of us are making sacrifices at this time. We celebrate Mass today without community, and I know that's a major sacrifice for our people. But these decisions that are being made, I truly believe now, now that I see better than I saw before, I truly believe that they are in the best interest of our people. These efforts will serve to protect, not completely safeguard, but protect our medical community who needs to serve the most vulnerable among us protect the most vulnerable among us as well, as we no longer gather in large groups. These are sacrifices. And in this past week, I read an article entitled, Sacrificing the Mass Under the Coronavirus Outbreak. It's our duty to stay home. It was written by Leonard J. DiLorenzo. And I just want to share with you a few things that he wrote. That is the great challenge for most of us in this pandemic, thinking socially rather than individually. We are responsible for each other. The mask will still be offered, even offered for our community. But the larger community will not be there. This is the cost of taking responsibility for one another. For the well-being of the most vulnerable among us, for the well-being of the medical professionals who are caring for the sick, we are called to make a sacrifice for one another. And it might be the holiest sacrifice we can make right now. My brothers and sisters, uh, in conclusion today, I just want to share with you a poem um, that was forwarded this week. I think it's circulating uh, virally on the internet. It's written by Kitty O'Meara, and it's called, And the People Stayed Home. I think it speaks to the great truth of our faith that we are a people of hope. We know throughout our history that tragedies and hardships have touched us as a nation, have touched us as individuals, 
we know that hope, better days are around the corner from what the darkness is that surrounds us at the present moment. And so may these words of Kitty O'Meara speak to your heart and give you the hope that is our faith. And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and grew gardens full of fresh food and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their shadows people began to think differently. And the people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. When the danger passed, and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses and made new choices and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us now come before our Heavenly Father, offering our prayers and our petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop, Bishop Daniel Conlon, and our Apostolic Administrator, Bishop Richard Cates. May God bless them abundantly in this time, and may the Holy Spirit guide all their decisions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, our God. We pray for all government officials, especially in this time of the coronavirus. May the Holy Spirit inspire them to look out for the most vulnerable among us, and to guide all the decisions they make. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to the coronavirus, that all who are suffering from it may receive healing, that all may become well, and for all doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, first responders, all who are most vulnerable and come in contact with the virus, may they be kept safe as they work to protect others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering, that the healing touch of the Holy Spirit may come upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, 
deceased family members, relatives, and friends, that they may enjoy eternal life in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of St. Peter and Paul Parish, especially those watching at home for this Mass. May God bless them and reward them for their goodness, and may they be given every grace and blessing that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our collective Mass intention this day, we pray for the intentions of William McGeeky, Bernice Budenkoff, Matthew J. Johnson, Bernie Zimmerman, Maria Patricia Castano de Rostopero, and Reverend Dudley L. Day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving Father, giver of every good gift, look with favor upon all the prayers and petitions we offer you, especially upon the most important needs of our world at this time. Bring your healing, bring your grace and your strength, and help us always to do your will every way we can. We make our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be you, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the we place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy to the Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, 
You give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the Lord, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter and Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant obsession of your presence we rely for our faith and health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation with the Lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We plead to proclaim with faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, Richard our Apostolic Administrator, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who have paid for the glory. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God. Those of you watching at home right now who cannot join us in receiving the Lord in the Eucharist, we offer this prayer of spiritual communion for you to participate in. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
to enlighten everyone who comes into the, this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.